Councillor Fenzi for the question. Looking first at the proposed expansion of Heathrow, as Council is aware, the initial request made by Hillingdon and four other councils for a, ju a judicial review of the adoption of the Aviation National Policy Statement was rejected. <coughs> However, leave to appeal was granted with the presiding Court of Appeal judge stating the importance of the issues raised in these proceedings is obvious and affords a proper basis for granting permission to appeal. I also accept that the appellant's grounds are properly arguable. Our case, together with three other appeals, will be heard between the 17th and 18th and 22nd and 25th of October. Depending on the outcome of these hearings, we, or Heathrow Airport Limited, Hal, will take this matter to the next appeal stage and it will take some time for the legal process to run its course. As a council, we are committed and financially resourced for the next stages of the legal challenge. And being no doubt, Hal and their puppet, back Heathrow, are very worried about this and they are right to be so. Hal launched their first major consultation on the proposed expansion in June, which runs throughout the summer with a closing date Friday the 13th of September. Friday the 13th being quite appropriate. The context for this consultation is set against the legal challenge. The Council's challenge of the Aviation National Policy Statement, the ANPS, was predicated on the basis that it was clear Heathrow expansion could not occur without excessive air quality, noise and many other environmental and social harm of such a scale that it would not offset like, the nebulous mitigation package that they were proposing. The Government's response was that the ANPS demonstrated expansion could be delivered to set a robust decision-making framework to ensure the environmental and social problems could be solved. This conclusion, this, sorry, this consultation was therefore an opportunity for HAL to demonstrate that they have made significant strides in delivering an expansion project that conforms to the alleged high standards of the ANPS. Essentially, it was a major opportunity to prove the Council wrong about expansion. The headline to take away from the consult consultation is that HAL has comprehensively failed to set out an expansion project that can even remotely be described as, as the sustainable development. There is no clear strategy on surface access and therefore air quality. The noise issues are being entirely understated. A great swathe of information is still absent or not disclosed. There is a lack of honesty about the extent of the project, i.e. hotel, storage, distribution, housing growth needed to accommodate more passengers and freight. There's, there is a distinct lack of credibility about the programme. Four years to construct the runway, including the diversion of several rivers and the M25, as well as to undertake operational testing, is borderline fantasy. And importantly, the levels of benefits are way down on what Parliament voted for as part of the AMPS. Simply put, Mr Mayor, the harm is much greater than expected and the benefits are far less. This consultation has required HAL to disclose for the first time a picture of the true harm of expanding Heathrow. However, it is noted that significant amounts of information are available but appear to be withheld, which suggests that the potential harm caused by Heathrow expansion will be even worse than feared. For example, the AMPS emphasised the local benefits with over 114,000 new local job opportunities to be created. The consultation significantly reduced the figure to circa 60,000 nationwide. This consultation, which is a pre-application stage of the Development Consent Order, the DCO process, should enable the Council to understand the scope of the project, the work undertaken to date, and a preliminary understanding of the effects of the scheme. Unfortunately, the decision to withhold vital information has prevented this from being a truly meaningful exercise. However, it has not prevented HAL reaching conclusions on likely significant effects. The Council considers these conclusions to be premature and misconceived, and they demonstrate that HAL has already made determinations on impacts and effects without the necessary evidence being in place to substantiate them. Vital information is missing in relation to the following, and this is not an exhaustive list, but vital information is missing on health impacts, area of growth relied upon to justify expansion with no indication of where they will be located or when and how they will come forward, contaminated land with valuable desktop studies available not disclosed, flood and water management with survey data available but not disclosed to the council even though we are the lead local flood authority, 
surface access with a decision taken not to disclose information to the Council as a Highways Authority, heritage with desktop surveys undertaken but not provided, ecology with vital supporting surveys withheld, economic growth with information presented in the last two weeks of the consultation time frame, thereby not informing the Council's assessment, noise with meaningful flight path data entirely absent. This is an airport expansion. Air quality with key aspects on modelling data not made available. The Council simply cannot understand why so much information, which is stated to have been collated, has not been made available. This would have, been, this would have made for a far more credible consultation exercise. Quite frankly, Howe's approach is disingenuous. It gives a distinct impression that it's nervous of being found out. In short, the purpose of this consultation, which is to front load the DCO process, has been fundamentally undermined by the decision to withhold so much important information. The Council will submit a comprehensive 250-page response to the consultation. Separately, it's intended that a letter will be sent to the Department of Transport to seek a review of the AMPS in light of this consultation. There seems little benefit in going through an extended, highly complex, resource-intensive development consent order process if there is clear warning signs that HAL cannot meet the challenges laid down by the AMPS and are promoting the project that does not align with what Parliament voted on. I remain confident, Mr Mayor, that this project will not proceed. As regards the White Elephant HS2,